Hey, I'm Seth King. And I'm Sonic Sons. We're the rambling reviewers. Sorry, it's swallowing something. <laughs> Today, we're looking at what is, we think, the end of Season 5 of Steven Universe. We've been fooled on this before. But it sure looks like the end of the entire show, apparently. <laughs> but there's going to be a movie coming out, and maybe a Season 6, and everything is very vague. And that's weird. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's get started. Was a, Were we satisfied with the series? Finale. The season slash series finale. Look, there is a lot of heartwarming stuff here. Steven Universe has got a lot of credit. No, 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 no. None of the, but, none of that. Just gut reaction. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Yes, I liked it. I was more ambivalent on it. Well, so am I. But you told me to give me a very simple reaction. <laughs> yes, I'm we're, I'm, we're about to criticize neutral, it. That's neutral but here. positive leaning. I mean, like a sixty, uh, like six out of ten. I consider five out of ten neutral. Oh, I'd give it a little higher than a six, certainly. Uh, but but it could have been more. Um, Sorry, I focus I, on things and those drag me down. Yeah, no, that's why we're reviewers. <laughs> to, to some extent. Uh, so we left off after uh, Legs from Here to Homeworld, right? Uh, no. And, yeah, because that's... Wait, do I have this right? The uh, list of episodes. Uh, no, no, no. Legs from Here to Homeworld was when they went to Homeworld. Wait, wait, go down, go down, go down. Oh, for heaven's sake. What? Written by short? oh sorry sorry I thought it, I thought that the season two episode was written by Katie Sackoff oh which Katie Sackoff is the person who played Starbuck in the reimagined Battlestar Galactica oh, <laughs> so wow you can imagine why I was <laughs> surprised when I thought I heard that All right, thank you Wikipedia no okay but we as our reviews though left off uh, like some here to home world if I remember correctly let's go take a look at our own channel to find out yes I was right okay so uh, so um, like some here to home world was. And still is my least favorite Steven Universe episode. It got better after that, See, certainly. Um, I'm a little more hesitant about this. This started an arc in season uni- Steven Universe Season 5 called Diamond Days. It was heavily advertised. It was like, oh, this is Steven coming to Homeworld. And I was just really disappointed with the entire way Homeworld was presented. It seems like there was a whole bunch of things that just didn't make sense... And I know Steven Universe is trying to go for we're emotionally mature and we, this is how people really deal with their problems. But then I don't think that they can, I think that it works if you consider it only from that perspective. But the problem is that you can't consider the problems of Homeworld from only a personal perspective. Hmm. To quote Dragon Age, if you, if you do as you if your power affects only yourself and no one else, then you may do as you will. But as soon as your power starts having an influence over others, you must consider the consequences of your actions. And that's the point, I think, at which the whole Diamond Days and the treatment of the diamonds in the final five or six episodes just really just falls apart for me. Because they don't consider that what their actions have done on the global scale? No. Well, the show itself doesn't... Con- it's not... The diamonds don't. Although they don't. It's that the show and the writers don't consider what the diamonds have done on a galactic scale. Yeah. In favor of showing them as, oh, I was bitchy because my mom figure, White Diamond, was emotionally distant. So I thought I would be, like, really cruel to everyone in order to gain her attention. And okay, if this was a story where Yellow Diamond was Stephen's aunt who lived in Colorado or something, and that w- and she ran a business, fine. That would be great. Mm-hmm. My problem with the special and the entire series is that they don't con- is that you can't consider her like that because their crimes are insane. They're on the level of Doctor Who villains. They have committed genocide obliterating planets, extinguishing sapient races, turning worlds that were fertile and full of life into barren wastelands populated only by gems who could be shattered at any moment if they do anything the diamonds find fault with. This is not something that you can say, okay, well, I guess she just learns in the future. No, she is a criminal. She is a war criminal. I can't even compare her to God. I, I can't even pull a Godwin on this one because you can't even compare it to that. You have to compare it to other races that have done similar levels of crimes. We're talking Daleks or Decepticons. Pretty much. 
Yeah. And, and, and that's, I think, where this thing really falls apart because it wants us to sympathize with the diamonds, to show them these are people and they have emotions and they've been emotionally hurt for so long. But you can't. I can't view them as that because they're murderers. Yeah. They're mass murderers who have been killed on a scale that is incomprehensible to my mind for tens of thousands of thousands of years at bare minimum and have shown no sign of stopping up until this point because they started feeling sad. Yeah, it's it's unrealistic to say the least. Um it, the thing that really jars it out of me is that Steven Universe has always tried to portray itself as emotionally mature. That we understand that there are problems with these things. That there are... That emotions are not easy things to just get over. And you shouldn't get over. You should accept your feelings. Sure. There'd be a lot of grief, grief and rage over uh, what has happened, you know, on the part of the victims. The, what I'm saying is... That in trying to make themselves seem more emotionally mature, it makes them seem so much less emotionally mature. Right. Well, basically, they're going for such a big change that they didn't uh, properly earn, the writers. They're like, we want to somehow redeem the Nazis. Well, you're going to need more than five episodes. Um, that's... That's a much bigger no. deal. You know what's a great comparison no, You're is, not trying to redeem the Nazis. You're well, trying to redeem the Daleks. Right, right. Well, I'm going to just refer to them like whatever terrible things I can think of. Um, but, you know, a, a nice comparison is, what's that Deep Space Nine episode where they thought they had uh, Galdar Heel in their custody? Mm-hmm. And uh, duet. So, oh, my God. Right. So, that. basically, they, we have this guy, and we think he's... He was the com- he was the, the equivalent of like the commandant at Auschwitz, right? Did mm-hmm. terrible, terrible things, yep. and it eventually turns out that no, this was just um, the guy who who kept the books and kept records and stuff, and he heard the screams of the innocent. And he's been feeling guilty just for being in the same vicinity, even though he wasn't the one who ordered it. He wasn't the one who physically carried out any of the deeds, and and um, then we end up feeling sympathy for this man who isn't really a bad guy. He was just in a place where he felt there was no way, he, nothing he could do to save the innocent. If he tried, he'd get shot himself. Um, so he's, he's laden with this guilt, but he didn't personally do it, and we can sympathize. That would be nice if that was the situation we were dealing with here. That would be much easier to be like, okay, we can get the equivalent people on our side and be friends. But you're talking about the folks who personally ordered the destruction of planet Earth. We're, you know, yellow diamonds telling Peridot to her face, no, I want that planet to die. That is a large scale above. Well, let's not let's not forget that yellow diamond ordered the construction of the cluster, which is basically taking the sharp, the broken remains of soldiers on both sides of the conflict and cramming them together and shoving them inside of the earth to gestate for thousands of years, knowing that they were tortured horribly by this new... In- <laughs> Incredibly horrific existence. Yeah, she basically invented hell <laughs> yeah, she in order invented, to build a bomb. Out she of it. invented hell and then <laughs> weaponized it. And we, this is made very clear when Garnet finds out about just fusion experiments in general, and uh, or shard fusions, I should say, and freaks out, like nearly defuses out of stress and and horror. And then come legs from here to home world, she's talking casually with blue and yellow as though she has okay, no reason to does, be upset. She them. does show some restrain and anger it was not much that i recall it was a lot of just all right let's go like here are the corrupted gems and it wasn't like yeah you'd better that you guys are the worst people i've ever met well okay admittedly we've seen that the diamonds could easily bitch slap each and every one of them yeah but still give me a thing where someone steps off to the side and has a conversation outside of earshot or whatever give me something to show the passion don't just like gloss over it and admittedly they were also trying to play nice so that they could get the diamonds to come to earth to fix the problem you mean get the well go back to get white to come to earth to fix the act yeah, yeah but she's still earth. trying to play nice and okay that's okay it could have been shown better though it could have been it could honestly i feel like there was meant to be a season six or if there is going to be a season six there was meant to be a season six that comes before the finale we saw that all of this if you were going to try and redeem the diamonds okay let's let's imagine they show up on earth steven reveals he's pink diamond uh, there's a truce for all of 10 minutes, so they realize, wait, Pink is Rose, and, and therefore Pink betrayed us, and we're angry about it. Then maybe they fight, maybe we've destroyed their spaceships, and they end up, the t- blue and yellow go off to, like, some island or something, and, uh, 
you know, we don't know what to do yet, but okay, at least they're stranded here on Earth. And then you could spend an entire season on them to slowly learning, or maybe just Blue, to slightly, somewhat more sympathetic, slowly learning not to be a jackass and learning to respect Earth life and feeling true remorse for what they've done or nearly done in the case of the cluster explosion. And then, it, you know, you could have a whole journey about that, and then it could feel more like we've earned it. Instead, as we said in our legs from here to Homeworld review, it was, okay, I guess everyone's on the same side now. Everyone's really chill. Uh, we're going to take a trip. To what I, even even Bismuth was pretty chill about it. She was like, I don't want to take the trip with you, but, like, yeah, it's okay. Bismuth, you were the angry gem. You were the one who was willing to assassinate Steven just because, in your mind, he wasn't aggressive enough against the diamonds. Now the actual diamonds are staring you in the face, and you're like, yeah, well, you know, shrug. And this, for a show that prides its emotional maturity, to jump the rails like this is so bizarre. And it really it's, makes you think there was meant to be more time. In their attempt to make them seem more mature by showing we can get over our anger, it makes them seem more childish because it's like, oh, you know, they did a bad thing. Whatever, we can get over it. Yeah, you know what? It's it's um, it's roughly the equivalent of a deus ex machina. It, it's like, we want something awesome to happen here. Let's just say it happened, and we didn't earn it. You know what I'm saying? It does feel like season four of Babylon 5, where... J. Michael Straczynski was told, "Oh, we can't make, we can't give you season five of Babylon Five, so you're gonna have to take these two entire years worth of story and cram them into one, mm -hmm. which is a problem because it means the story suffers as a result. So season four feels like a rushed mess. And then of course they gave him a, a fifth season anyway because fuck you. Uh, and then he had to just stretch out season five, which is you know executives and stuff. It's yeah, kind of and that's why season five is." considered one of the weakest seasons I bet. yeah um, so but okay let's yeah, actually a small note on that though assuming it, they were compressed into this did they have to use up some of their precious time on a watermelon episode i mean the watermelons are cute that's fine and everything but like since we're already complaining about things being compressed spend that time on something else please the watermelon episode felt like the beach city episodes they're fine in the earlier seasons. They're fine. They're great. Let's watch Stephen, you know, pal around with Nana Fua or one of the fries or, or something. Hang out with Jamie in the mail. And all but that. see, when the when you're hanging out with Nana Fua, when the diamonds are crushing worlds beneath their heel, and you know this, maybe we have a thing yeah. where your priorities aren't in order. Well, Steven Universe was always built on a contradiction, and that contradiction just became more evident as we went along. And, you know, I get it. There's part of the premise that it's, like, superheroes but relaxed at the same time. But, yeah, it, it, as, as the stakes got higher, it became a little more obvious that we sh should be taking things a little more seriously with a little more urgency than we are. Uh, or, you know have more hatred of the people who tried to blow up your precious planet, Stephen? Like multiple really, times? Multiple, well, they had one blow up plus, blow up, yeah, plan, but a separate conquering plan. Okay, but they kind of kill plan. it back when Yeah, Dino that's true. Around. They had, they were going to hollow it out. I remember that graphic. Okay, so that's like some weird homeworld, like we were saying. So they get, they arrive at homeworld, um, and, uh, everyone thinks that Stephen is pink, and he has a hard time explaining to all that. He goes to Pink's room. Well, he's sent to Pink's room. He's sent to Pink's he, room. He meets White Diamond, who is basically a static background image and a moving mouth. It's it's like something out of uh, an old Conan O'Brien sketch with a moving mouth. Okay. Stuff. Uh, it's, I mean, I like her design. It's creepy. I mean, oh, I, I do. It's just that it's just weird is yeah, all. I think that was the idea. And White Diamond is like, did you get it out of your system? Did you have fun? Well, I good, good. Go to your room. And then just kind of sends her in a bubble off to her room. Well, yeah. send Steven in yeah. a bubble off to Pink Diamond's room. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he gets there and um, discovers these little people called Pebbles living in the walls. Yeah, this is another thing that bugs me. Who Pebbles makes... just don't feel like they fit into the Crystal Gem world. Yeah, what are they? Are they gems? Are they like I a different they're... species? Are I they a they're... slave species? Yeah, but they live in the walls. I think they're meant to make this place seem weirder and more fantastical. Yeah. But here's the thing. It doesn't match with the established gem technology we've seen used thus far in the universe, mm. which seems to be based largely on hard light and the, um, and the manipulation of matter into various shapes. Like how uh, Peridot was able to reach into the wall and pull out a gem disruptor in back when Garnet was singing Stronger Than You. 
Uh, or when Jasper. Oh wait, did Paradox grab the gender gender? Yes, you did. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, um, she was in the control center. Ah, right, right. Or when she Paradox slammed her head into the ground and the ground f- manipulated and f- moved up like a liquid oh, yeah. into the escape pod before dropping through the floor. Yeah, it was kind of like watching a fusion of some kind. Having little people manipulate, you know, physically build anything in the room that they want. It doesn't feel. It feels like something out of you see from Moffat's. Everything is a fairy tale days in Doctor Who. Could be. Certainly, it seems very low tech compared to everything else the gems have. In particular, compared to Rose's room on Earth, which, which you is know, was infinitely a... more advanced. It's a holodeck. It, yeah, it's a holodeck. <laughs> and, Furthermore, they, they have other gems that appear to be there for just making the place a little weirder. Like, there are wall gems, or gems that are just speakers. Yeah, I wasn't clear if those and are... And there's a hairbrush gem. What kind of hell does that gem go through? Oh, good, I'm alive. My only purpose in existence is to brush Blue Diamond's hair. And I don't even do that. She holds onto my face while she drags me through her hair. I mean... They might morph into hairbrush form temporarily and then morph back, but it's a shapeshift thing, right? Maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's I, the thing. But I, that wasn't made clear, no, so it just made it seem like this This is one of those and I must scream moments. And with the, <sighs> given how evil the diamonds are, that's not outside the realm of possibility. No, it's not. So why do they have gems that are in the walls? That are walls. Why not just... Are they guards? Why not just have a couple amethysts? Or, or quartzes of some kind to watch. It seems like it would be a lot more useful than a wall. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember the wall gem, actually. But anyway. Um, Steven sings a little song about how this feels all familiar because he has, I guess, very small traces of his mom's memory uh, activated. Um, and then he uh, decides to put on a party um, for the Nazis. <laughs> because we're not letting go Spring of that. Time oh, for yeah. Hitler. Yeah. Winter for Poland and France. See, but that was meant to be crass and ridiculous, and this is just like completely innocent. No, that was meant to be amazing. <laughs> wow, within the fiction, it was meant to be crass and ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> because Stephen thinks that a party will work, and you know it's going to fail, but here's the thing. Given Steven's plans and the level of emotional maturity of these final few episodes, it might have worked. You think? I'm just saying that the way that they defeat the Diamonds once and for all is, well, not the most emotionally, we said it before, not emotionally mature. So throwing a party for them seems like it could actually work. (laughs) Okay, well. Look, Steven, stop taking inspiration from Pinkie Pie. (laughs) No one should take inspiration from Pinkie Pie. That is that way leads to madness. Plus, did the one time I remember Pinkie Pie trying to do that to solve an international crisis, she caused a war between the buffaloes and the ponies. Oh yeah, that whole thing. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Stephen decides to put on a party, which, harken back to the emotional maturity thing, is. You know, it was great seeing how much Steven has matured, seeing uh, how childish he was in the first two episodes, and then when you get to, say, the episode uh, Mr. Greg, and he is able to bridge the relationship between Pearl and Greg, um, and, and there's a lot of history there with Rose and everything, and, and you could and that, that felt like he earned it. Like, yeah, Steven has become uh, uh, smart enough and compassionate enough that he can bridge that gap. But then when he's facing a much harder task, I want him either to just punch the diamonds in the face because he's found an area where, uh, you know, he, he's not, you know, a saint. He, he can't be uh, the type to solve literally everything with, uh, with nonviolence. Or if he's going to do it in this redemption sort of way, frigging earn it um uh de- delve a lot deeper into the histories of everybody and 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 figure out what makes them tick as opposed to well we'll throw a party when granted it does fail and he and connie get in trouble for fusing and they're thrown into jail oh, and, and then... the rest of the crystal gems who came with them start fusing meaning we get to see opal again for the first time since season one 
Yeah, I don't think they have the voice actress on tap. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have the voice actress for Sugalite. No, Nicki Minaj is busy. Well, no. Yes, I know Nicki Minaj is busy. <laughs> it didn't stop them from having Sugalite show up in, uh, what was it, when oh. they blew up the relay. Oh, you're right. Never mind. Um, so, they get in trouble, and they're thrown into the room, I guess. Let's call it jail, because it's serving that yeah, it's, purpose. It's jail. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's jail. I couldn't even tell if it was the same room or not. Um, and then there's a confrontation with Blue Diamond. No, no, no. There's the watermelon episode where Steven tries well, to yes. project to Earth. And, I don't know, instead of... He tries to draw a picture showing what happens instead of writing out, you know, please help, well, this is the circumstances. He eventually did write it out. Uh, also, can Steven, like, not astral project into something? Like, say, okay, I've taken over a watermelon... How about I take over something? How about I try again with something that isn't a fucking watermelon? <laughs> also, why are there watermelon birds, sharks, and dogs now? Steven only made the Stevens. No explanation there. It's just, just silliness for its own sake, which is okay as far as watermelons are go, whatever. But, but in this context, it's the tone of the piece yeah. and, and the context in which it happens. I guess they were trying to go for a breather episode before the big finale, but like... And granted, they're not under the existential threat they used to be when the Earth was about to explode. But, but you're in prison. Yeah. Okay. I'm on the home, in home world. Um, so the last episode is Change Your Mind. The four part big thing. Yeah, see, it it starts out with Blue Diamond walking into the prison and saying, Pink, you were so bad because your organic monster pet things got out and ruined a party. And it turns out that this took place thousands of years in the past and that this is not the first time that this has happened because when Steven wakes up from the memory dream, it turns out that Blue Diamond is walking in and giving the exact same speech. Okay, I know we're supposed to look unfavorably on Blue Diamond here showing that she's being unreasonable for not accepting Steven slash Pink for who she is and making her cry. Here's the thing. If I was to... If I was the president of the United States and I went to the G20 and I emptied my pockets and they were full of snakes, I don't think it would be unreasonable for people to be mad at me. Now, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here. This, this is a different analogy. This is a, No, it's really it not. It is very much. He did not bring snakes. He brought Connie. Now, the analogy we're going with here is bigotry and the gems do not like organic life forms. So if you're the president of the United States and your date happens to be black and everyone hates you for it, that's on them, right? Uh, I would... Okay. Granted, my analogy was poor. Okay. Here's the problem, though. If this has happened before, often enough for it to be a trend, you'd think Blue Diamond would say, no, do not bring organic creatures to these things. <laughs> this is on you. This starts, this starts not being a problem with... With you being overbearing to Pink, this is a problem of you not having basic fucking pattern recognition. <laughs> okay. mm, let's see. Not... There is a recurring trend of Pink bringing organic life forms to parties, and the parties being ruined by the organic life forms. <laughs> I'm sure it won't happen the 18th time. Well, regardless of that, the there are lab rats that learn this point faster. But they try. The point they try to get to here is that is that Blue starts to have this revelation about how. Uh, she and the family has mistreated Pink in the past and are mistreating her now. Why? By grounding her for By grounding her for chaos? Oh, for she all right. It's meant to be an analogy to bigotry. And they shouldn't ground someone for being open minded and tolerant and shit. Like you're supposed to be open minded. Um anyway, they try they make it for the rest of this episode is is this journey of us, let's call them, you know, blue and yellow are the sisters and white is the mom, us the family uh, realizing that we've done wrong to Pink. And this is odd, because we already talked about how they're, they're all basically Nazis, and we kind of ignore that to be, like, chill. And now we're inventing new problems for them that have not actually been hinted out ever before. You could have done this. You could have had a motif where Steven, throughout the series, will occasionally have a nightmare where he's trapped in a small space. And then it turns out, oh, those are the memories of how his mom was always trapped in a small space by her abusive family, and they would throw her in for no reason. Or you could have Pearl, 
telling Steven at some point, you know, your mom told me what it was like on Homeworld and how the other diamonds treated her, and she hated it, you know? And, and this could come out perhaps after the revelation that she was Pink Diamond. Um, or you could have, when we flash back to, to uh, Rose, just before she fakes her own death and becomes Rose, right? And she's talking briefly about pink and yellow, I mean, blue and yellow. Um, and what she says to them is very flippant. She's like, oh, don't worry. You know, blue and yellow think this is Pink's planet. They're not going to bother. And she doesn't seem to, to think of them as much of anything as, as being a big problem in life. That could have been a much different speech. It could have been, no, I have to change my name. I'll change my identity. I don't want to be part of that family anymore. They have hurt me and abused me all my life, and now I'm going to be a different person. And there could have been some righteous anger in that. And that would have been so much more mature than just Tommy saying, oh, well, I guess I don't want to be part of that anymore. Because it would have shown that she feels things that aren't, you know, vague all kindness. <laughs> and uh, they did show in the Jungle Moon flashback that, okay, Pink was sort of the, 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 the younger bratty sister that was like nobody did her quite enough respect. But what they're trying to go with this conversation and change your mind is a much higher level of abuse. Not just like, oh, yeah, we should respect you a little more. We're like, oh, no, we used to lock you in this room all the time for no reason. Like, that's uh, that's a whole lo level above. Okay, we're going to have to disagree about no reason thing. Because uh, I'm still saying if you bring... Okay, from Blue's perspective, that was the equivalent of a kid bringing a box of frogs into a fancy dinner party. Blue has a terrible perspective, though, is my point. I get that. Okay. But I'm still saying you should have expected... A, you should have expected right. it. B, you should have made... Uh, to Pink, who you think is back and in this weird new body, do not bring organics to this thing. If you fuck this up, we're gonna lock you in the fucking room. Again. Yeah, well, the tone of it, regardless of... Because part of what I'm coming from is not even the specific reaction to do you mess up parties. It, I... I took it as implied that they would also send her to a room for all sorts of arbitrary bullshit because the empire runs on arbitrary bullshit a lot so it seemed kind of built into the atmosphere that i yeah, assumed there was the other problem with that is there's a disconnect between pink diamond ruler of earth and pink diamond as we see her in jungle moon and what she's implied to be like even before that before she was made ruler of earth once she becomes ruler of Earth, she seems way more wise and compassionate and intelligent and less prone to go off and do wacky bullshit. Now, she still does wacky bullshit, as shown when she pretends to be a Rose Quartz, just because she wants to say hi to all the other Quartzes and stuff. Yeah. Fine. But at the same time, she still seemed way more mature. When she's presented as she is in Jungle Moon... She seemed like a bratty child. Is there meant to be a time skip in between then? Probably. Yeah. So maybe she had time to mature, is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just we don't see that. Yeah. So it seems more reasonable for the diamonds to punish her like you would punish a bratty child. By sending her to her room. Or to the timeout corner. So I can kind of see what you're I can see what you're getting at and what they were getting at. Okay. My thing is that they didn't establish that enough to make it not seem justified on their part of just sending a bratty kid to this. Well, they certainly the didn't. Corner. There's a lot of things that weren't uh, fully thought through or developed or justified, hence our compression argument or supposition. Uh, so Blue comes to realize that, oh, wait, we've been jerks and we should stop. It Which takes her all of like three minutes to do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm sure that Pink never at any point spoke up and said, hey, I don't think this is fair. At which point, Blue would have immediately gone, Oh my god, you're right, this isn't fair! My entire worldview is shattered! Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that exactly. Uh, and then she, they go, Alright, let's go get the crystal gems and send you all home. And they're being held prisoner by Yellow Diamond. And then they fight with Yellow for all of five minutes. And then Yellow switches to our side too, basically. Because she realizes, Oh my god, I'm hurting another diamond! Which, you know, you were fine with stomping Pink into the ground, like, a couple episodes ago with the wedding. I mean, I, you didn't know you it, was it was Pink at the time, but, yeah. but still, you know, seriously, how is this the thing that gets under her skin? Oh my god, I've been emotionally abused by another diamond my whole life, but I've heard another diamond! Oh no! Again, This is not a case of ape shall not kill ape. This is just some weird thing where she's so self-centered... That she only really sees her effect on blue. 
I guess. Which isn't really speaking well for her if you treat one person well and the rest of the universe like crap. Yeah. It's, again, could use a lot more time. Uh, so then they're like, all right, now we need to confront White Diamond. Uh, and let's have a big, cool action scene while we do that. Uh, Peridot and um, Bismuth show up and Lapis... Uh, and we do this whole thing where we get to see the fusions we've been waiting for briefly. I mean, it was fun seeing them. I mean, you know, Sunstone yeah. is fun. Uh, Rose, uh, Rainbow Quartz, too. And, uh, who else was we have? Uh, Smoky Quartz again. Yeah. Um, the new, they also have, pretty much all of the gems have new designs. Um, Lapis has bits of gold in her outfit, which represents how real life Lapis Lazuli is frequently found. Oh. Um, Peridot has Kamina glasses. Woo! Which, okay, one, I'm always happy to see Kamina glasses, but not on Peridot. I'll grant you that. I mean, of all the characters, she is not the character to be Kamina. At best, she's Liron. Yeah. Oh my god, she is to she's totally Liron. <laughs> Just a little less flamboyant. Oh my god, I can't unsee this! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Um, and then it's revealed that Steven can fuse with gems to make them reform themselves. Oh, yeah, that seemed reasonable enough from what we know. Yeah, it, it just, you know, a bit of last minute. Also, how fucking high up were they? Because Steven comes up with this whole plan and does this scene over the course of about ten minutes of them falling the whole time. Yeah, but I mean, it's a galactic empire. They must have some really tall building. You know what? This is just totally Coruscant. Remember Anakin doing his long fall in episode two? Uh, yeah. Although, here's another problem. If this is a, sti a city the size of a planet, where the fuck is everyone? We yeah. see no one anywhere in the streets. There's this is the capital city of a galaxy-spanning empire. Nobody wanted to animate the crowd scenes, I'm telling you. They're just like, oh man, there's too many arms and legs to... Let's just pretend nobody's doing anything today. <laughs> okay, so... Just pass it over. Uh, so then they fight the giant Megazord with, with yeah. White Diamond. All the... All the uh, personal ships of the diamonds, it's been hinted at the whole time, but they turn into a giant robot. Um, yeah, and so they try fighting it until everyone fuses together into Obsidian, which turns out to be the gem that the temple's outside design is based on. Yeah, I which figured I, that was that. I, I, I do have to ask one question, though. How did they not try this before? I mean, it's hard to learn how to fuse with people. They've established that. No, 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 okay, but after Steven, Steven showed he could fuse with gems when Smoky Quartz came around, how come none of them tried this before? Oh. You'd think I that mean, Steven would say, no, we shouldn't fuse together. He, he would leap at the chance to try to see what his fusion would be like for Pearl or Garnet. Well, I can only assume that they tried it off screen and still never quite got the rhythm of it. It technically seems to require a emotional connection at least on that first time they're so moms they're special moments is what i mean not just like because he spent the whole time he, he was doing um uh, uh alone together um just before he fuses into connie he does this whole montage of trying to fuse with any of the other gems and fails so okay. presumably more of that happened off screen um anyway he confused everyone now which is great i wish you had more because we had like smoky quartz for instance you had like that was the climax of that whole episode and you mm -hmm. had some time with her and then it was, uh, you know, it was a little faster this time. So we go fight the thing, <clears throat> and uh, we get inside, literally inside White Diamond's head, or, or, yeah, the robot head rather. Yeah. Into where White Diamond is. And, and then, oh wait, no, no, no. Early, earlier, um, she showed that White Diamond showed that, hey, you know that emotional development that we sort of kind of half-assed for the diamonds. Too bad. Psst. Oh, yeah. shoots the diamonds and takes them over and makes them into her meat puppets. Well, gem puppets. It turns them white just like White Pearl was. Which, I'm just like, okay, okay. Well, if you can do that, why do you need anyone else? She does have a throwaway line where she says it taxes her energy to do too many people at once. So, really? apparently she can't do the whole galaxy at once, type of thing. Um, okay, so we get in there, and... We get to our, our the, the big climax, which is the redemption of White Diamond. Which... Who we were told was even scarier than Yellow Diamond, and should be even harder to redeem, and it happens pretty quick. I mean, it wasn't We exactly... met her, like, five episodes ago. Yeah. 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 And most of that has been spent hyping her up as worse than Emperor Palpatine meets Davros. 
Yeah. Yeah, and she, at least she moves in this scene, which, you know, <laughs> she's not a background painting. Uh, yeah, well, that's, it's all about how she's, like, so so uh, aloof and, and also in control of herself. She doesn't usually move. Yeah, she claims that she is a perfect diamond who has removed all flaws from herself, which, no, no, you are a massive bitch. <laughs> that, is, that is a flaw. Right, That yeah, is a flaw. Yeah. Um, and she takes control of all the crystal gems who show up, which is basically the main cast, meaning that the backup crystal gems have just been sitting outside, thumb up their ass or something. I don't know. I don't know. The, they couldn't get in or something. I forget how that works. How can you not get in? You have two... In fact, why did the... Why did Peridot and uh, Bismuth and Lapis bring both ships? In case you want to hit people with ships, I don't know. No, no, no. All you The things are like kilometers long. Don't tell me they didn't have room for them. Why did you need two of them? Just get one, punch, punch White Diamond, grab the guys, leave. Yeah, I have to go check that again, see exactly what happened in that episode. And whether there was an explanation I missed. Um, so White Diamond is doing this creepy thing, and and look, there's 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 interesting stuff in here. It is pretty horrifying to see everyone get uh, uh, mind controlled by White Diamond, and she does this creepy speech that she's clearly prone to doing, and grows to pluck Steven's gem out of his body, and you're like, ah, oh, that's like real body horror there. And manages to do that because she's trying to reveal that pink diamond is really is pink and, and the Steven part is, I just, I don't know, a costume from her perspective. Uh, but the gem morphs itself into a ghost pink version of Steven, who is basically Steven's soul or something, or the gem part of him. Who knows? Uh, it turns out to be immune to all damage, so that's that's really nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice to know that, you know, <laughs> there's no drama anywhere here because, you know, I mean, it, they, his, his power is essentially on god mode right now. I mean, they kind of earned that because of how emotional and did it, but yeah, it, I don't know. I, this whole thing still could have taken more time. So he, he re-emerges himself. I guess the whole point of that bit was we want to ensure the viewers at home that we've sort of settled Steven's identity and who he is, and he... Pink diamonds. I mean, Rose isn't really in there. She is effectively dead, like we've been assuming this whole time. In case anyone had any doubts about that, uh, uh, he there were some doubts. He reemerged. Uh, he reemerges with this thing, and and White Diamond says to him, "Why do you have to keep acting like a child?" And he says, "I am a child. What's your excuse?" And then she blushes and has this this freak out moment where she realizes that she's being childish, and that throws off her whole philosophy about how she's perfect. And she loses her focus and stops doing the mind control you know, on everybody. Why doesn't she mind control Steven and have him pluck out the diamond? And then keep control over the pink diamond thing? It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, because she's shown she can control diamonds. She can control two diamonds and a whole bunch of other gems, including a permafusion. Yeah, I don't know why Steven would be immune to that other than plot armor. Yeah, there is really no reason why she can't just take control of him and then have her empire just the way she wants it. In fact, she'd be able to control all the diamonds and just do whatever the hell she wants. You know what would have been cool? Yes. Unicron <laughs> comes to devour Homeworld only to be met by Super Gurren Lagann. Okay. Yes, that would be cool. <laughs> um, but... Okay, since it's always been a mystery as to why Rose decided to give birth when she knew full well that she would effectively die in doing so, um, I always had the headcanon that she must have been terminal anyway, or that she got hit by some weird diamond energy blaster or something, and, and she only had so many years or something. Um, but you could do an additional thing on top of that, which is that by creating a being that's part organic and part diamond as a result of that that combined being is immune to white diamonds mind control like if you could justify the gem science of that right then it could you know help to explain it could, it could be set up as no wait she can't control organic she can only control gems and steven is part human and then he like breaks out of the mind control you know and then does something awesome right mm -hmm. and it would be like oh man rose is a brilliant tactician who had at least sort of kind of planned this the whole time, you know, for, or set it up as a, as a distant uh, uh, a possibility, you know, just in case White should ever try to claim my son. Here's uh, kind of like how Harry Potter was protected by his mother's love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but his mother didn't 
plan that. Okay, this, in that, this that case, it was, no. A more yeah, no, 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 okay, okay. Is. In this case, I'm talking about a more planned thing. The point is that uh, you could you could turn the, the love of your parent into a tactical advantage. And that's a fun thing that uh, stories can do, is they can make the, the physical and the emotional link up in ways that they wouldn't necessarily do in real life. Um, that would have been cool. See that you could have you could have built that up, earned it, and then you know Stephen could have fought everything off at the last moment there. Mm. Also, if he's going through mind control and 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 you know has to fight it off and resist it, then you could have an episode or a half episode inside Stephen's head, like during the mind control process, mm -hmm. and he could meet like essentially the ghost of Rose, right? Who like. I'm thinking of, of near the end of Gurren Lagann now. Yeah, you where, know, where Kamina it, shows up in yeah. everyone's memories. Does Rose do that? That'd be awesome. Because I wanted to see her. I wanted her to sing the damn song from the credits. Right? Love Like You. Love Like You. If, yeah, if, if I could begin to be half of what you think of me. And, you know, what she's saying is I'm not as great as I seem. I'm not perfect. You know but you, Stephen, you can be wonderful and you can do wonderful things even if I couldn't. You know, you know what's weird about that song? What? I, I hear it. I think of Blake from Ruby. I do huh. not. I do not know why. <laughs> She's, but it just feels like it fits her for some yeah, reason. Yeah, well, she's got that that reserved attitude. She's not a braggart by any well, way. I, well, so. also, like, um, uh, she's got that whole dark past of working with the White Fang. Right, exactly. Yeah, wait, but, no, a Blank Rose crossover. Okay. No, no, we are not doing this. <laughs> we are not doing this. <laughs> um, um, anyways. Uh, anyway, so off the topic of which uh, Steven Universe songs fit which Ruby characters, because I don't think that's a, I don't think even BuzzFeed would touch that article. <laughs> you never know. But all right, so so Steven, I think that everything we just described would have been much cooler. Um, and you could have had a montage of yeah, all the right. things we've you're seen right. before. It would have been so much cooler if Steven had been inside of his mind and Kamida had showed up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would just... It would have uh, been cooler. <laughs> That would have been re or Lonely Blade could show up at least. Oh. <laughs> the, the, he, the show within a show about the samurai dude. Oh, I've got it. Oh, I've got Lonely it. Blade, you're so lo like Lonely Blade could be there helping him to fight his inner demons and shit. You know, that'd oh, be the, fun. The Dog Copter could show up. Dog Copter, the crying breakfast friend. Oh uh, yeah. Lonely Blade. Um, uh, the characters from Garnet's universe. Yeah, mm -hmm. that Hoppy and and. Okay, I know it would be totally stupid, and if that had actually shown, we would be complaining like hell about. Well, no, that. you you could do it right. You could do the emotional bit with Rose just shows up and she's like, you know, draw upon all your inner resources soon. Hit her with everything you've got, and then he like thinks for a moment, and all these creatures start popping up <laughs> around him and fighting no, like no, no. hell. He thinks like crazy a dog hopter pops up rose just looks like kind of like <laughs> wait what the hell and meanwhile like as he's sending dog hopter in the bathroom he goes okay maybe i should have thought through this whole giving birth thing a little more <laughs> you know the other thing that could do giving birth was a mistake no <laughs> the other thing that could do though is it would allow us some way to get a whole cast in the climax if we were inside Steven's head, he could imagine his dad being there and rocking out and, like, the rock waves help, like, shoot, you know, energy into the white diamond matrix thing. Yeah. And then, like, Sadie could be there and everyone could be, like, super fied or whatever and, and just, like, you know, they're together, the power of all their memories because it would be Steven's emotions that help him overcome the mind control as though he were fighting off cybermanization or something, right? Yeah. Cyberization, whatever they call that. I um, think it's close enough. Uh, that see if you had time episode if you didn't have watermelons you could have had time for everything we just explained yeah as much as I think the watermelons are cute um, so eventually because uh, White re realizes that she's been acting bad in this one particular instance and you know not because she's an intergalactic despot who's exterminated countless civilizations and ground them to nothing beneath her boot that somehow means Stephen is right about everything and that's everyone should just do what steven says yeah you know i just the parallel i just realized is the redemption of darth vader right who was not the despot but pretty close to the empire in terms of being in charge of the empire but the way they did it with him is as soon as he gets redeemed he dies <laughs> so we don't have to ask ourselves any more questions about whether he truly deserves to like you know hang around with everybody and act like everything's normal Right, that's that's why the redemption equals death trope exists. Is so you don't have to ask those questions. Um, in this case, though, the diamonds are very much alive and really should go on a multi-centuries-long repentance tour of somehow making up for all they've done. They can't. And they don't even try. 
Um, because we've shipped, we've, we've dropped the whole Nazi story. Now it's become a family drama thing, which would be fine if that was the story in the beginning, but it wasn't. So, like, what yeah, happened to the spent, Nazis? Yeah, like, all up to even this season was just about the diamonds are evil, they control homeworld, they're trying to kill us all. Right. And sure, they humanize Blue a little because she's grieving for pain, but, like, still, you know, you, you are clearly Nazis. <laughs> here's the thing, though, about... Here's the thing about grieving or acting out because your your mother figure doesn't pay attention to you. I can understand. There are even some justifications for doing what you do. The justifying why you act the way you do. Here's the thing, though. Linkara once said it best in his review of Power Rangers Time Force. Just because you have a sympathetic backstory does not make you sympathetic. There is, uh, talking about the villain Rancic, who was treated as a mutant and was uh, experienced racism for his mutations, so he led a bunch of mutants in a violent uprising and decided to destroy all of humanity. We can understand why Rancic did that in the series. We can... Sorry, I went down the wrong pipe. We can understand the reason... The reasoning we can understand how he got to that point in his life we can see why he decides to attack people and be a, a villain but that doesn't stop the fact that even though we understand why he does something he's still attacking people yeah he's still killing people he's still just because you have a reason to do something does not mean it's okay to do that something it doesn't justify you it doesn't make it okay. I get hungry sometimes. That does not mean that I steal food. Or murder somebody. <laughs> like, get out of okay, anger. I was you're... trying not to go to murder first. <laughs> no, the point is that we're talking, we're talking about such a high level of, of, uh, of crime here. Right? I could actually understand someone stealing food if they were starving and had no other option. Okay, yes, but... But, but, but uh, yeah, this, this is like, was way outside the bounds of what could be considered reasonable. Yes, so that's why I really don't accept it. Because ultimately, if you say, well, they didn't have a choice, they were emotionally bullied, that takes... One thing that I think that isn't given enough credit in fiction is sapient life. And most important attribute about it is its ability to choose. People can choose to be better than what they are. People can choose to be worse than what they are. They can sacrifice themselves. They can preserve the lives of others. They can extinguish worlds. They can raise them from nothing to glorious empires. But it's the ability to choose that really makes us people. To simply say that the diamonds are... That they had no choice but to go along with this is wrong. Because it means that they at no point chose. That they are little more than automatons. Insert input A, you get output B. Well, especially in the case of White, who didn't even have an input A. She has no sympathetic backstory. She was just evil for no explanation reason, you know? She's more of the Palpatine than the Vader, and she gets redeemed somehow. Yeah, it's... <sighs> but but that's, that's, that's just my problem with this sort of redemption story. It's because you were bad, you were bad because you had a reason, therefore you can be forgiven. And, you know, forgiveness is something that... Uh, you know, you gotta earn on some level. If you've, especially if you've done something of this magnitude. My God, Sluggy Freelance dealt with this topic of forgiveness and redemption better with the arc that which, re with the saying that which redeems consumes, because it warns about how people seeking redemption should be careful not to try to travel so far along the road of redemption, to try to redeem for their crimes that they commit worse crimes. Oh, wow, that's a whole separate question. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but it, it examined it in a much more interesting way. That it examined it. Yeah. Well, the other thing I want to get to is uh, two parallel points. One is, as I think I said in the Legs from Your Homeworld video, I, I would like to see Steven uh, meet his match in terms of the, the villains he can't redeem. And granted, well, no, I can't say granted anymore because right at the end, Jasper apparently gets redeemed. Um, but there were people that he apparently couldn't save. And just had to, like, move on from. Um, and I, I wanted to even get to the point of 
I, I, I presume it's okay to spoil the end of uh, Avatar, <laughs> uh, Last Airbender. Oh, okay. Um, because because he, he does this whole thing. He, Avatar is trying to... Um, it's an Avatar. Aang. Or Ang, if you want no, to. No, 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 Aang, no, 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 I'm just kidding. Aang is, uh, wants to be a redemptive hero and ends up fighting Ozai and finds a way to disable him, take away his armies, take away his power, put him in jail with the thought that maybe he could be redeemed at some point, but you know what? Does not actually manage to do so in the course of the series. And never does in the future either. But, like, the point is, even Aang found his match. And, and even s some people you just can't reach or they refuse to be reached or whatever. And I would like to see Steven reach the emotional maturity of knowing your own limits as far as how you, far you can reach to someone. Uh, finding White Diamond, perhaps, was the one person he couldn't redeem. And he had to, like, depose her and throw her in prison or something and, uh, and do something similar to Ozai. And then liberate the other gems, who we didn't actually get to see the rest of the, the, the presumed off-world, under, uh, off-screen underclass, like, getting liberated and having a party and stuff. Yeah. We didn't get to see that, because we didn't have time. Oh, and speaking of off-screen, after the deus ex machina, everyone's safe now thing, they go to Earth, and they land at Beach City, where Sadie is having a concert where she's singing Drive My Van Into Your Heart. I preferred Greg's version. <laughs> Greg is the master then. Look, look, I'm not... I, I didn't care for Sadie before her character development. I don't care for her now. Okay. I mean, it's... I, I get what they were doing. I just don't care for her. It's just taste personal preference. Um, and coincidence of coincidence, here comes the Sun Destroyer, or Sun Obliterator. What was the name of their ship? Oh. The one that Emerald owned. I couldn't tell you the name of it. And looky here, it's Lars and the Off Colors here at the final moments to land the ship and reveal all with all their wacky adventures that we totally saw and loved and were completely amazing. Yeah, they were all off screen. We never saw a damn thing. We had an all the uh, uh, Lars infiltrating into uh, Gala and taking Emerald stuff, uh, disabling fifty gems to steal her prized ship. All of those things we never see them. Despite the fact that I said repeatedly, I don't want to see the focus be on Steven anymore just so that we can see Space Pirate Lars and his awesome crew doing awesome Space Pirate stuff. Or anything else. We don't see any of that. Nope, we get Lars and the Off Colors landing on the beach next to the Diamond Ship and somehow not noticing the kilometer tall giant robot or the hundred foot tall giant women standing next to it. How do you miss that? <laughs> no idea. This thing is the size of a mountain. It's bigger than the temple. <laughs> yeah. This is not subtle. They walk out the door and suddenly, oh, there's people out there. Giant people. Um, God, you are just yeah. fucking well, stupid. Again, if we'd had a season six before all this, there could have been Lars doing stuff and Lars turning around to go back to Homeworld to help out Steven near the climax. That would have been cool. Which we've... We discussed is we something discussed we already, wanted, yeah. but no. Apparently, Lars and the others just kind of walk out, and everything's okay. And Steven sings an updated version of the "We Are the Crystal Gems" song he sung in that one special. Yeah, I mean it's also the theme song, obviously. Yeah, and what's really annoying about this is the montage that plays over as Steven plays. I mean, it. I was okay with the montage. Okay, the montage was, was okay. Was the hard. problem with the montage is that it covered up major character developments that could have helped humanize the other characters. It shows uh, the diamonds, white diamonds, seeing the corrupted gems for the first time. Which, oh my god, this could have been such a huge moment. Um, yeah. About, you know, oh my god, this is what we did? Oh, okay, that could have been a big moment for white diamonds, seeing this is where we went wrong. No. But it's just like about 30, about five seconds of her looking at these things, looking vaguely disgusted. And any dialogue is not on screen because Steven's busy singing. Then it shows them gathering up all the bubbled, corrupted gems and dumping them into um, uh, Rose's tear pool thing. And all the gems start popping as the uh, diamonds get into the pool, and that means that the water, for some reason, now is able to cure corruption. And Jasper shows up! Oh my god, the fan favorite Jasper? Fan favorite for so many people, ensemble Dark Horse, um incredible antagonist who pushed our heroes to the brink 
nearly destroying the gems on multiple occasions. Personal nemesis of Amethyst, and who inspired multiple character developments and revelations, amongst others. Yeah, she, she uh, says nothing. Uh, the only thing that's said to her, she does nothing because Yellow Diamond glares her down, um, and Amethyst says some words, but we can't hear what the words are, and then she kind of just sinks up to her nose in the water. <laughs> because, you know, that is, that's what character development is. I admit there could have been a lot more on that. And, and then the diamonds just kind of fuck off back to Homeworld while leaving the leg ship behind. Because that's... I guess they I hope they're going home to go liberate the people or something. Uh, they didn't really make that specific. Huh. <laughs> I hope the next uh, season they just have some diamonds... Some people obliterating Homeworld. Just, just destroying <laughs> the diamonds completely. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just mad right now. Yeah. I am just mad right now, but just... Yeah. You have this whole world that you could have... It just feels so rushed. Yeah. You could have stretched the last five episodes out into an entire season. You wasted the potential of Lars and the Off Colors. You... It, it's just... You well, talk, and you can Yeah, talk. well, to loop back on the, um, the Redemption of White. Um, so, White is uh, playing the archetype of the narcissistic mother or parent really it doesn't have to be female um she thinks she's perfect she demands everyone else follow her rules and uh, uh, uh reflect glory onto her um and steven disarms her with this one remark he just, he just points out well yeah it turns out you're not perfect and um this you know, sets off this immediate cascade in her mind where she, like, changes her whole worldview. And in real life, it's not that easy. Uh, it, it is it's actually extremely hard for someone with uh, that level of narcissism to ever change their ways, except if they're just pretending temporarily. But to, to actually see what they've done wrong, to see their own flaws, to accept that they are flawed, and then to work on what flaws they can and become, like, reasonable people and to treat others reasonably and make up for what they've done... That's that's a that's asking a lot, um, and my the, the trouble with this is that there are plenty of people in real life who have a narcissistic parent who spend their entire lives trying to fix their terrible parent, trying to, to make them see what they've done, trying to to show them enough empathy and understanding and patience and to explain over and over. Uh, and th what the, the narcissist will do is just keep abusing you over and over, you know. There are some people certainly that are, like, sort of bad, and they can they can take a breath and realize that they they need to change. But there are other people who, as far as psychologists can tell, seem to have gone beyond a sort of event horizon where um, no one... Unlike uh, some superheroes who have decided to go beyond plus ultra. But, um, <laughs> Ching. No, but they've gone beyond, like, the, the point of no return, as it were. Um, and... It, they just they just stay terrible uh, as far as anyone can tell like i don't know if they'll come up with some new version of therapy someday that actually works but the point is it, there's a lot of people in abusive families who spend tremendous amounts of time and effort trying to get the love they always wanted and deserve from a parent who is just never going to give it to them for whatever reason and the 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 mature thing to do is to realize look i have to stop going to the empty well I have to stop thinking this person will change. I need to associate with other people who will treat me right. Um, I'm nodding. I'm concerned that uh, they've, they've, the writers here have sent the wrong message to people in abusive families. That if you are in the position of Pink slash Steven, if your mother slash uh, parent slash authority figure is treating you terribly and, by the way, is also a Nazi, uh, that you can just, like, oh, no, 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 confront no, them and... Don't, don't remove the... All right, even, okay, even, 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 even putting that aside, even putting that all aside, even just they've been jerks to you personally and to everyone around them in their personal circle. Um, or even not to everyone around them, because some narcissists just pick, like, one target and not to other people. They're at least nice <laughs> nice on the surface. Um, but if it, you know, we're sending the message, I feel, that if you're in that position of being abused, that all you have to do is, is confront your abuser, tell them what the problem is, be uh, honest about it, and they will automatically understand. 
And there's a lot of people who will try that and will fail and they will think it was their fault for not like communicating correctly and they will not understand, wait, this is a situation where I just need to walk away. There's a bit just before they form Obsidian where it's like it's something like, oh, White won't change your mind. And I think Garnet said, well, we'll change your mind for her or something like that. And like, you, that doesn't work in real life. Um, I, I would love to see Steven learn the lesson of when to walk away because there are so many real life people that need to learn that lesson. And it's not a lesson that's really remarked upon a lot in fiction. No, it's not. Even when, one thing that gets me about anime is that it especially seems to not get this because I can list like dozens of characters who just need to learn to walk away. Just they they need they need to understand that their relationship with a person or place is toxic and is just going to hurt them more in the long run. And I'm looking at you, every single romantic harem anime that <laughs> yeah. seems to think that beating the shit out of the male lead is love. That's messed up. I'll give you that. <sighs> but okay. The reason I said to leave aside the Nazi thing is that's a bad enough lesson as it is. Right, that you, right. you can always get through to the abusive person. But it goes back to what we said earlier. They're combining the message that you can always get through to this person and somehow combining it with you always need to forgive when that really should not be applied to someone who has done what they've done. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not like... You know, because we we, when we say Nazis... Let me make something clear. There is the one type of terrible person who has made the odd, horrible joke or something but hasn't killed anybody. And then there's these people who are actively trying to blow up the goddamn planet. Like, that's that's the that's, that's a whole separate thing. And before anyone says, oh, well, the kindergartens, you know, the diamonds might not have known. Okay, let's assume that you're right and the diamonds don't know in general that kindergartens suck the life out of a planet. One, how the hell would they not be aware? They've done this to about a thousand different planets. Two, we see in Jungle Moon that Yellow Diamond was personally directing an invasion fleet and speaking to Nephrite saying, Yes, of course they're resisting. We're invading their planet. Yeah. That, that was a line from a person that we later just got along with. Uh, it's... it's for a show with such emotional intelligence, there's so many other lessons and other episodes that are like, oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, the way these you deal with that conflict, you deal with that feeling. I particularly like when just after the, the news of Pink is Rose comes out mm -hmm. and everyone's kind of panicked about it, and Steven tries to, to get Amethyst to open oh, up. Oh, I was about to mention yeah. this one. And then Amethyst sprint turns it around on him and says, no, wait objectively, you're the one dealing with more shit right now. You should lean on me, if anything. And I was like, Hey, I, that's that's very mature of Amethyst. There, Amethyst should maybe go talk to um, oh, what's her name, Vidalia, if she wants someone to talk to. But don't put too much on the guy who's got too much on his plate already. What a great lesson! So this shows had a lot of good lessons, and then right at the end, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense, and probably is the result of compression. Uh, yep, that's where we stand. And then yeah. there's gonna be a movie. We have no idea what's gonna be in this movie. Yeah, we don't even have. Like, <laughs> is there a whole new story? Is Stephen grown up now or something? I have no idea. No really? idea. Hopefully it'll be a good movie. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically... I, I, I think we've covered everything about um, the finale of Steven Universe. I, I think we have. Um, Look, the most of the show is great. The songs are great. The, the characters are fun. Yeah. But it's just... This, this... It just feels so wrong. It hits this, a lot of our buttons on... For you, it hits the forgive the abuser thing. Yeah. For me, it hits the forgive the war criminal. <laughs> yes, thing. yes. Uh, and, and objectively, the war criminal has done more wrong. The, the forgive the abuser just happens to be uh, uh, something I've seen in real life. You know. Yeah. I mean, and both of those are okay. You can forgive abusers. There's a difference between forgiving and trusting, I guess, if you want to make that distinction. Yeah. Because they didn't just say, like, the, the, way the version of forgiveness where I have let go of my anger. Which, by the way, healthy anger is perfectly fine. You're, you're allowed, by all means. That can be very good for your psychology. Um, but, but even if you sort of let go of your anger, that doesn't necessarily mean, now I trust you and I want a relationship with you. You know, even if you have no more anger, it can still be, no, you're a terribly untrustworthy person and I don't want you in my life. You know? Just objectively. Just, yeah. you know... Um, it's 
my complaints about Steven Universe are the emotional immaturity that yeah. they showed in the last few episodes, which really, which unfortunately is fairly consistent with how they handled the rest of the show. I'm not saying that they were emotionally immature for the rest of the show. I'm just saying that the way in which they were emotionally immature in the finale... The particular flaws here had been flaws before, but now they're yes. magnified. Yeah, I could say that. I could say that. Exactly. So, I think that's everything. I think that's it. Thanks um, for anyways, listening. Yeah, I'm Sith King. I'm Sonic Sons. Signing off.